assure you this is not a game of one-upmanship. Our press release was precise and to the point. Spalding Enterprises is donating 5,000 turkeys to the Ruth Price Shelter simply because we care. Remember our motto, families working for families. Yes, thank you very much for calling. Oh, ah, these are beautiful. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. But... What? What's the occasion? Because you're my wife and I love you. Hey, aren't you supposed to be in class? Professor Trapps called in six, so I... Thought we'd spend the afternoon doing something we haven't done in a very long time. Honey, it hasn't been that long. I mean, talk. Talk? About what? I'm sorry to interrupt, but the gentleman insisted. Evie, it's okay. So, what do you want, Mallet? Well, a map would help. It's some setup you Spaulding's have, one hallway after another. I felt like a rat in a maze just getting here. Mm, interesting analogy. Now, what do you want? Well, your wife. I was hoping you could help me with something. What's that? Neil Evers' murder. Billy, come here. Come here. Come here. It's gonna be all right. Hush, oh, Gray. Look, if you coddle the boy after he drank in school, you are making a big mistake, Vanessa. I'm through making any mistakes with you and my son. This portion of Guiding Light is presented by Comet Cleanser. Deep down, you know it's clean. Oh, no, stop, Russ. Listen, nothing happened. Nothing happened. What do you mean, nothing happened? We were happened. just dancing. Just dancing? Yeah, we were at this convention. It was such a success. We were just celebrating. There's only one bed in here. Where did you sleep? Or were I... you up all night celebrating? Okay, I slept on that couch. It was actually quite comfortable. See? There's no reason to be upset. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. You're here with him. I can explain okay, all that. Okay, okay. No, I will explain. Look, an East Coast syndicator, Don Spinner, offered us the use of this cottage. I accepted. I thought it would be a good idea to be able to work and discuss the show without all the distractions at the convention. That's all. And I agreed with him. The, the, the Spinner is a major distributor. I mean, he's, he, 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 I didn't want to offend him. It's just, you know, WSPR is going to make so much money if we get this deal. Just save it. Would you just spare me? I mean, you two are really so... I can't deal with this anymore. Russ, Russ, you've got every reason to be upset. I know this is bizarre, but if you just try and understand the circumstances... I understand the circumstances. It's you I don't understand. <laughs> Now that I know you and Molly are all right, I can go home. I'll please have the uh, clerk call a car to take me back to my hotel. Aren't you going to ask me? I know you're dying to know. Tell the clerk I'll, I'll wait out front. You just a minute. Just a minute. You asked me if I slept with Holly. This is a brilliant conclusion. Now, what makes you think that my wife knows anything about Neil Everest's death? Well, you divorced Philip just before Everest was murdered. It's not unlikely you might know something to help my investigation. Blake, you don't have to say anything until a lawyer is present if I don't miss my guess. Now, if you want, I can go get Clarence and he can be in here. No, and... honey, I don't need a lawyer. I have nothing to hide. Well, good. So about Neil and Philip. Would you like some coffee first? I know I would. I'll be right back. Thanks. Evie, I need coffee for three. But I'm in the middle of And something. napkins, lots of napkins. Hurry. So, it must be hard going over the same ground twice. Why don't you just give up, you know? Close the case on Philip. I can't. Your brother has to be brought to justice. That again. What makes you think that he's still alive? 
Well, that information is confidential. You're a liar. My brother is dead and you know it. Now, the only reason you say he's alive is because you're up to something. Now, I'd like to know what that is. Look, I'm out to solve this case and your brother's the key. Now, I've spent time with his friends. I've read over old news clippings, letters. I feel like I know the guy. You don't know anything about my brother. If you did, you'd know he's no murderer. Notes for a meeting. Don't forget to pick up those papers you dropped. Here we are. I hope you like it. I made it myself. And here is your coffee. There you go, dear. Son, well, what's he doing drinking in school? What's coming to mother? Stop Let's stop it! This is a family matter. This will not be discussed now. Well, you never mind discussing it in front of people before. Of course, then you weren't on the hot seat, were you? Billy, this hey, is. Shut up! Um, look, maybe I should take little Billy upstairs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's not necessary, honey. Go get your things. We're going to go home right now. Just a second, little Billy. I'm not through yet talking Sorry. to your mother. Go get your things. We're going home. Bill, you do what your mother tells you. I told you to shut up. Sweetie, come, listen to me. I'm not going to pretend that I'm not very, very angry about what you did today at school, but it's okay because I know that you're upset and you were trying to tell us that you need some help. No, Mom, it wasn't that. I just wanted to be like Dad. Ah, oh, we'll talk later, okay? I just wanted to be like Dad. Go get in the car. Not so fast. I'm not true with the boy yet. Yes, you are. Come on, Bill. Me and Harley go way out in the car with you. Do we talk this thing here? I said I don't want to talk about it now, and I mean it. Billy, just give it a rest. Look, it's not fair. He's my son, too. You can't just take him away. <sighs> okay, you want to talk, we're going to talk. It's better. Listen to me. It is over. It is finished. What? Yes. Obviously, I deluded myself about how serious your drinking was. And let me tell you something. It's fine. You go ahead. You wreck your life. You try and wreck mine, but you're not getting to that little boy. You are not. You are not going to destroy my son's life. Don't you talk to him like that. Don't you dare talk to him like that. Just stay out of this, Nadine. I won't let her talk to you like that. Billy is not some kind of a bug that you can squash under your heel. He is a good man and a good father, and he loves his son. And he has rights, too. Nadine, this is between Billy and Vanessa. Maybe you should just stay out of it. Maybe you should take your own advice, little brother. This discussion is over. Look, you can't blame me for little Billy's drinking. Oh, no? No. He, he lives with you. I mean, you probably drove him to it. What? Me? Just the way I drove you to no, it? Is that what you're saying? All I'm saying is that it is not all my fault. Oh, well, whose fault is it? Whose fault is it? Is it the alcohol's fault? Is that what I'm supposed to blame? Because I'll tell you something. I don't recognize you. I don't recognize you. Goodbye. No, I'm not going to let you go back there and fill his head with lies about my drinking. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Does that mean the kind of lie that you're telling right now? Come on, that's not fair. Not fair? You want to know what's not fair? What you have done to this family is what's not fair, Billy. <sighs> you 
You know, the person that I knew and loved. Uh, I don't know. You were always fair. I swear I don't know who you are. Let them go, Billy. Don't you think that boy's seen enough for one day? to help the police in any way possible, but I can't imagine what I'd know that you wouldn't. Philip and I weren't on the best of terms in the end. Of our marriage, that is. Well, uh, sometimes a certain question can help jog a specific memory. That's what I'm hoping will happen this time. Did you ever see blueprints for the towers at the penthouse where you and Philip lived? No. Could Philip read blueprints? Yeah. Were you in Philip's will? I was until he named Beth his beneficiary. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. That's it? It's possible I'll have more questions later. And I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thanks for the coffee. Mm -hmm. I forgot, I have a meeting. Blake. Listen, don't let him or, or anybody scare you, okay? I won't. Promise? Good. I love you. Don't let me down. you too. More and more every day. I'll see you at home. January to July. Thanks. Would that be all? Yeah, um, just hang out for a minute, okay? Um, I may have some questions. Okay. You, have you ask me if I slept with Holly. I know that's what you're thinking, isn't it? Isn't it? Fine. Since you brought it up, did you sleep with Holly? Ross went back to the hotel. He wouldn't talk to me. He wouldn't even listen. I gotta make him understand. Oh, well, uh, Roger was about to call a car for me. We'll all go back together. <sighs> Roger, please. Right. What happened? 
Why did you bring Ross here? Perkins had a heart attack. When I realized you were alone with Roger, I panicked, Holly. I was afraid things might get out of hand. But you went to Ross for help. Tell me what happened. They'll have a car waiting out front by the time we get there. Hurry up. I gotta catch up with them. Vanessa, we got little Billy squared away in the car. I'll drive you home whenever you're ready. Okay, thanks. I was just saying goodbye. Thanks. Let's go. It's a brave lady. Pretty determined, too. You have to admire that. Well, she's a good mother. Little Billy's lucky to have her. Just trying to help Nadine, but next time let me find my own babies, okay? I just couldn't stand the way Vanessa put you down like you were dirt or something. You don't deserve that. Well, I don't know about that. No, Billy, she just doesn't understand. I mean, losing Reva was enough. I better go outside and check on Harley. You made a big mistake when you sided with Vanessa against me. Not from where I stand. A boy shouldn't be separated from his father. You got a son, Josh. You can understand that. Really, the circumstances are different no, here. A boy needs his dad. He is, she's not going to take him places that are wild. I mean, let him get right up there close to it so that he can see it. She's not going to let him do things that are going to test him so he can build up self-confidence. Oh, yeah, it's going to be safer with her. Look, that boy loves me different, and I love him. Vanessa has no right messing with that. Billy, you gave up most of your rights when you walked out on your walked family. Walked out right, you walked out. She threw me out. Well, she wouldn't have been able to throw you out if you weren't too drunk. Look, you, you just watch it. Listen to yourself, Billy. You are not the same person. You are choosing alcohol over your family. You don't even know what you're talking no, about! I know you! You know, you and Vanessa are just alike. You spew the same garbage. She's right, Billy. You've changed. I don't even know how to talk to you anymore. Good. Maybe you'll just shut up. Vanessa just drove off with her son. Mommy, are you gonna let her get away? Hell no! Try not to lose your temper. Mommy, what are you doing? I'd be a good stepmother. I know I would. So what do you know that you can't say in front of your husband?
case, it's me. Listen, Compton and Brax are on my case, threatening to... Why don't you stop them? Why? Because I'm down to checking out the last 50 numbers in Clayton and Phillips at the end of one of them. I just need a little more time. Don't argue me, Lisa. Just do it. Miss Balding, you're right on time. Thank you for seeing me in private. I couldn't talk in front of my husband. Yeah, I figured that. Nice penmanship. Because what I'm about to say would hurt my husband incredibly. Kill him, actually. I understand. So, you ready to talk? Would you like some gum? No, thanks. I'm gonna tape this if you don't mind. Um, actually, I do. Let's keep this off the record, okay? Well, I assume you can substantiate this information. Better than that, you can. I wouldn't go out on a limb like this if you couldn't. Okay, then. Do you know who killed Neil Everest? Yes, I do. Well, who was it? Maybe if you told me what you were looking for, I could help you out. This is it. What? You remember this? Yes, it's a letter I typed to Clarence Bailey. Philip wanted his will changed, naming Beth and the baby as beneficiaries instead of Blake. Right, okay, what, what's this part, though, about again requesting the change since you never heard back from Clarence? Oh, I'd almost forgotten about that. What, Evie? This could be important. Philip said that he'd given me a letter to type up about a month before this, but I never got it. How is that possible? I don't know. It's the only time something like that's ever happened. My desk is very organized. Look, this, this letter is dated after the tower's opening. Now, the first time that Phillips said he gave you this letter to type, was that... Was that before the tower's opening? Yes, I think it was. And it disappeared. Which means that if, if Philip died in the explosion, then Blake would inherit everything. Blake. What about her? I don't mean to say anything bad about your wife. No, Evie, please, I have to know. Well, there was one night right before the opening. Philip gave me a huge amount of work to do. Not that I minded, but... You what? Anyway, I came out of his office with a ton of papers in my hand, and I found Blake sitting at my desk. She said she was looking for a paper to leave Alexandra a note. But you didn't believe her. There's plenty of paper in Blake's office. <sighs> okay, go on. Anyway, Blake insisted that I leave. She said she'd be a while, so I dropped the papers from Philip's office on my desk, and I left. So, uh... So you don't know what Blake did, if she did anything? No, I don't. Was there somebody else that came in after? No, it was... I doubt it. It was so late. I remember because I didn't have any trouble getting a... a cab. What? When I was getting on the elevator, somebody got off. Who? Gary Swanson. Philip. Philip killed Neil Everest. Philip. You're surprised you've been investigating him for months. Oh, well, yeah, but I'd almost given up hope. So you can understand why I couldn't say this in front of my husband. Oh, absolutely. But also, I mean, I couldn't keep it a secret either. Why not? What? This wouldn't have anything to do with Gary Swanson, would it? Excuse me? Well, I'm just curious. There's a lot of talk about Gary's role in all this. Oh. Uh, I don't know why. That's just a feeling the DA has. And I do remember a certain night you showed up at Swanson's hotel room with a full head of steam. Oh, that. Gary and I used to be close friends. He didn't accept my marriage to Alan Michael too well. Right. But that is besides the point. I came here to discuss Philip with you. Okay, go ahead. Well, Neil drove Philip crazy, especially when Beth wound up pregnant. Oh, yeah, I heard about that mix-up. But the baby's Philip's, right? So the hospital records say. Don't you? I say that the hospital is owned by the Spalding Foundation. So? So there are records, and there are records. So you telling me that the real father of Beth's baby was Neil Everest? Think about it. Philip was furious when he found out that Neil would be any part of that child's life. And then all of a sudden he accepted it. Isn't that strange? You tell me. 
Then right after that, we all find out that Philip's the real father. Isn't that lucky? Real lucky. How'd that happen? Dr. Sedwick. She's a doctor at the hospital, therefore an employee of Spalding Enterprises. She flip-flopped the date of conception, and the rich boy won. You're saying that Dr. Sedwick was influenced? Neil thought so, but he's not alive to prove it, is he? That's interesting. Isn't it? Why you tell me all this? You're married to Philip's brother. Where's your family loyalty? My loyalty, Mr. Mallet, is to my husband. And Philip never treated him right. Oh, really? He used Alan Michael's trust fund to manipulate him for years and then made his life hell when he married me. Funny, I never heard him complain. Alan Michael's been trained to defend Philip no matter what. And I want him to see his brother for what he really was so that he can come out from Philip's shadow and finally be free. That's the only way we'll ever be happy. Lock it. I don't want to be interrupted again. All right. Where were we? Ah, yes. You wanted to know if I slept with Holly. Just tell me the truth. It's the only way we'll get past this. The truth, huh? Okay, Alex. No, I didn't sleep with Holly. Well, what else would you say? Whether or not Holly agrees remains to be seen. Why'd you come down here? And why on earth did you bring Ross with you? You'd better stop hacking. I want to get back to Springfield as soon as possible. The truth, Alex. It's the only way we'll get past this. I called you, Roger. They told me you and Holly had checked out. I panicked and went to Ross, and we flew down immediately to see what had happened. Yeah, but why panic? I mean, people switch hotels all the time. And leave word where they can be reached. You didn't. So naturally, you assumed the worst. Given your history, what should I think? Now you listen! What I did with Holly, and to Holly, was years and years ago. Why can you not accept the fact that a man can change? I am talking about when you lied to me. The waterfront buyout, Ruth Price. How can I trust you to honor your marriage vows when I can't trust you to tell the truth? Okay, all right. I swear to you that I did not break our marriage vows with Holly, but you... Me? You might have done Holly a grave disservice by dragging Ross into all this. He may not care why you did it. Come in. It's locked. Oh. Sorry to bother you. I can't find Ross anywhere. He's not in the room next door. No, and he, I'm called everywhere I can think about. Nobody has seen him. What am I going to do? I can't lose him. Well, are you satisfied? Where are you going? Oh, I'm going out. In the meantime, maybe you can figure out a way to apologize to Holly for dragging Ross into your paranoia. Well... Is my husband still in love with you? Roger doesn't love me. He loves you. When I last spoke to you... I oh, know. I thought I had him hooked. Maybe about for a minute. I was certainly available. He went to that cabin with you. Yes. But when the moment came, nothing happened. Nothing at all? Well, actually, I became somewhat aggressive, and, uh, what? He rejected me. Oh. Oh. oh, thank heaven. Did he suspect anything? A plot? No, Alex. He just wanted to do what was right. Now, you have a chance for a real marriage now. Take it. Be happy. I will. I will. Thank you, Holly. I never would have been sure about Roger without your help. You saved my marriage. Now we have to save mine. And you've got to help me try and convince Ross that nothing happened. We're going to go with Roger's story that we went to the cottage to work without distractions, okay? Uh, that may not be so easy. Well, you know how Ross is. So analytical, trained to look for inconsistencies in a story. What did you tell him? I tried to make you look innocent, Holly, but I was, uh, I was so afraid for you. And, and when Ross realized I'd hired Perkins in advance... Yeah, what know. did you say? How much does he know? Everything. He knows everything. Everything? 
You told him about the plan? I tried not to, but he's a lawyer. And I was so frightened for you, Holly. Alex, you swore you would protect me in this. I know, but I... But I... Oh, Alex, what have you done? What have you done to me? I'm sorry, oh, Holly. Ross. Look, it'll be all right. Ross loves you, Holly. It's not like anything happened. Remember club soda, please? Nothing happened. Are you sure? I remember. Come on, Ross. I mean, we were dancing to celebrate our success with Spinner, that's all. It may have been just dancing to you, but to Holly, it was something else. You got it all wrong. Do I? Mm-hmm. Holly and I work well together. We make a great team. Look, we came down here with a lousy half-hour pilot to sell as a series. Mm -hmm. I bet Holly really sold that old love bug, didn't she? It was a business deal. Pure and simple. That's what you think. What do you mean? Roger, you may not have had Holly, but she certainly had you. You don't think you'll be back today, do you? No, Mommy, I don't. Well, then I just better go home and wait for his call. Oh, Mommy, why do you do this to yourself? Honey, I just came out here to be with you. No, I mean about Billy. You better get inside before you catch cold. You know that he's feeling pretty bad right now, don't you? Well, with Vanessa on his case like that, what did you expect? It's not Vanessa. It's not Vanessa. That's not the problem. His drinking is the problem. Vanessa made it a problem. Whatever. Why don't you just give Billy a rest right now? Honey, you don't give somebody a rest if you love them. And I love Billy Lewis. I really do. Harley, it's getting cold. You should, uh, you should come inside. In a little bit. Listen, I'm sorry if my family's problems upset you. No, it's not that. I mean, it's it's terrible that little Billy is, is caught in the middle of all this, but that's not what I was thinking about. What is it, then? I was thinking about my mother. I would rather be dead than in love with somebody who's in love with somebody else. Is your stomach still upset, honey? No, a little. Okay, I'm gonna go get you some medicine. I'll get it, Vanessa. Oh, thanks. It's, uh... I it's... know where it is. Okay. <sighs> now, about today. I'm sorry. I know you're sorry. I am, too. But we have to talk about this a lot so that it never, ever happens again. Do we have to talk about it now? No. No, we can wait till you've had your nap and you feel better, okay? Uh, he's a doctor. Here you go, pal. Down the hatch. Mm -hmm. This is for you. Thanks. <laughs> can I go to my room now? Yeah, go ahead. Sweetie, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I wanted to say something else to you, okay? Now, I know this is a really hard time for you right now, and it's a confusing time, but everything's going to be all right. When? I don't know when, but I do know, and I want you to know that you can always count on me. Whenever you need me, for whatever reason, I'm going to be right here. I promise. What about Dan? Well, I don't know about your dad, and I think you'd better talk to him about that. Mm. Sweetie. Trust me, okay? Mom is gonna do everything she can 
to make it the best for you, the best for me. Can you do that? Can you really, really trust me? job for this. Thanks. Thanks for being here. I came to see my son. Billy, everyone's had enough. You shut up. You get my son. Either you leave this house right now, or I'm calling the police. Well, thanks for finally coming forward. Mm -hmm. It was my duty to tell you about the baby. Yeah, you're a real good citizen. Good luck with your husband. It'll hurt Alan Michael in the short term, but we'll make it through. Together. Mm -hmm. Levy, it's Malik. Listen, I want you to check out Spalding Foundation and see how they run Cedars Hospital. Who reports to who, who has access to hospital records, stuff like that. Yeah. And tell Lisa I want to subpoena Dr. Sedwick's files. Yeah, thanks. Bye. That's not Spalding's baby. And that's a motive for murder. Yeah, Vera, hi. It's, it's, um, it's Alan Michael. Listen, Vera, Blake and I will be having dinner in our room tonight. I'd like for you to make something that goes well with champagne. Yeah, lots, lots and lots of champagne. Thanks, Vera. Okay, Blake. Tonight we loosen your tongue. Just want to see my boy. Now's not a good time. Oh, and that's why you're going to call the police? No. No, I don't think I'm going to have to call the police, because I think you're going to go. I think you're going to realize it's a bad idea to come here. Would uh, you agree with it? Oh, that's great. That's just fine. My son and the woman I love are ganging up on me. That's not how it is, Billy. Yes, you... that's how it is. The whole family's against me. I'll tell you, a man never had a better reason to drink. Billy. Thanks, Vanessa. You know, after a couple of drinks, I won't even remember who you are. You all right? You know, I really want to... I want to say thank you for coming here and... telling me what was going on and being honest. And I know your father would say the same thing if he were himself. I don't know. Dylan, I know you love him. And I know it was hard to do what you did. But it was the right thing to do. Now it's my turn. What are you going to do? I'm going to get a restraining order. Billy's not going to be able to see his son until he stops drinking. of the word.
clean slate. No more secrets. No more lies. What do you mean, Polly Henry? What are you talking about? You remember that little clause in your prenuptial agreement? One that keeps you on a very short, very monogamous leash? How do you know about that? From Alex. They decided to put you to the test, Roger. Alex? And Holly. Your wife and my fiance set you up. This has been Guiding Light. Silver jewelry by Nancy and David. Tableware by Mikasa. Be sure to be with us Monday for another full hour of Guiding Light.